said, good God, mighty God, the only God, the true God. Come on and give him praise. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Come on and give him praise. Amen. Why don't you get standing? Those of you who are sitting down, just stay where you are. Amen. Those of you that are standing, you all like those 80 praises. Amen. And if you go back to an 80s tape or anything, it didn't take much for people to keep on standing and giving God praise. So just come on and stand. Just sit down and eat. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Now, let me 
might have some questions before we go in the car. Anybody in the house today that's still in the store? Still holding on to what you got on last night? Still holding on to what God has given to you and what he has increased into your life? Still holding on to your revealed and restored prayer like we are praying? Still holding on to what God has blessed us with these people? Because you don't need it to finish out this service. You, you've been up all night. You, you've been going all week. But we need God to continue to refresh us. Now, there are local people in the house. Okay, great. Just, just want to make sure you want to stay and watch the ball game. Because how if you, if you made the effort to come into the house of God this evening, you came here, hallelujah, for no other purpose but to lift up and to magnify the name of Jesus. So I believe if at least the Louisville people make the sacrifice to come to church tonight, they might as well be blessed.
to a wonderful part of this service. We're going to do a little bit of hand. We're going to have our speaker introduced and then the choir is going to come and give their closing selection for this Congress and then we will have the Word of God. And at this time, I'm going to ask the First Lady John Keith to come and introduce our speaker on tonight. And after that, we'll be in the hands of the Congress of all. Thank you. 
aspects that the world will allow. I want to I read to you uh, from the book of uh, Ruth, uh, the second chapter. Starting at verse number 10. Uh, the Bible says, Then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said unto him, Why have I found grace in thy eyes that thou shouldst take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger? And Moab answered and said unto her, It has fully been shown me all that thou hast done unto thy mother in law since the death of thy husband. How thou hast left thy father and thy mother, the land of thy nativity, and are come unto a people which thou knewest not heretofore. The Lord recompense thy work. And in full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel, under whose wing thou art come to trust. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, lead us tonight to bless your people. Give us a word that will stand with us. And take us as we go through the power of the Holy Ghost. We ask your blessing even now in Jesus' name. And all the people say, Amen. I want to talk for a few more moments. If you will pray with me uh, from the subject, um, your family matters. Your family. Matters. If you'd be kind enough to get somebody out of hand, give them a smile and just say, your family matters. Um, maybe uh, a little uh, background and it is, um, I think, a God blessed us on last night um, and began and restored us. Praise God. And um, sometimes in um, our restoration, we get our blessings. Uh, but we don't always make sure that the families that we love get their blessings. Uh, and the adversary works on that to keep us uh, struggling, to keep us. Uh, sliding back after we've had deliverance uh, because when your family is not together uh, it is a problem in your life whether you recognize it or not it is a problem I wouldn't want to go to heaven and not take my family I wouldn't want to see other folk saved and my home not be saved. Uh, it's extremely important that we keep in mind that family matters. Uh, tomorrow morning is uh, the first Sunday of the month and at Refuge it is a mandatory couples class. Uh, because a strong church is built on strong families. And when our families are not there, you know, folk when they come to church, they come to hear the preacher, but they always look at the preacher's wife. All the time he's the preaching, they're looking to see how is she in this life. Because if she ain't with him, y'all ain't gonna help me. No, y'all ain't no sense of us getting with him because 
it ain't gonna be too much to love. Uh, family matters. And too often in the church we get so busy in ministry that we forget about our families. Uh, uh, folk ask a lot of times, say, Pastor, why don't you like going to the cookbook? I don't like going to the pulpit because I like sitting with my man. Amen. Um, uh, just like you have fun at home, you ought to be able to have fun at church. Amen. It ought not to be that we come to church, amen, and separate and struggle. Y'all ain't said that. I don't know what you read. You know, we want a whole lot of years and go through a whole lot of things. But from what I've heard over the last few nights, God is doing some different things. And if we want to be blessed, we have to operate in those different things. Praise God. And, and uh, you know, when, when, when we uh, come to the house of God, to be a joy because we are in the house of God. And we are a blessed God because He kept us to be able to make it to the house of God. Um, when we are the people of God, Satan in every way tries. When I was not saved, the devil never told me I wasn't saved. But when I got saved, praise God, he spent a whole lot of time telling me I wasn't saved. Because he didn't want me to grow in godliness. He didn't want me to know him in a, a very special way. He wanted to, to keep my mind clouded. Because cloudy people are not blessed people. Praise God. But God, amen, uh, his every work is to strengthen and bless his people. Start in the book of Genesis. God did a powerful thing. I think it's the first chapter and uh, somewhere around the 28th or the 29th verse in Genesis, praise God, and it's important enough that I think I ought to read it to you. The Bible says, uh, and God said, Behold, in verse number, uh, let me start at 28, and God blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fires of the air, over every living thing that moves upon the earth. When God did that, what God was saying is I want you to be like me. And he followed up with the second chapter, 15 verse, the Bible says, And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. That was his job. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the God, thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. God made Adam in his image. And after his likeness, he he gave him the wisdom of God to actually subdue the earth. Praise 
Praise God. Uh, subduing the earth means that Adam was to take charge. There is no way that God would want Adam to take charge of the earth and not take charge of his life. Here we are, saints of God. And when we are not strong in God, we are complaining that I can't do and things are not going well and how can we take charge of the earth and not take charge of ourselves? Family matters. We told the Tapinate to say, family matters. Bible goes on the next verse and it says, and the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. God said, I'm going to make somebody special just for him. The reason God was going to make somebody special for him was because God wanted Adam to be like him. Uh, the world has so infected us, so damaged us, that instead of being like God, we have picked up traits that cause us to do things that are against God's program. The power of God ought to resonate in us. And the power of God resonating in us ought to cause us to operate without fear. But many of us are operating in fear although we are claiming We talk to one another. How you doing? I'm doing all right. Have you found anybody? No, I haven't. See, we are afraid even to commit like the world has caused us to think that we ought not to commit it. And now, folk are more thinking, I'm just going to be single all my life. Not the plan of God. God's plan was, I'm going to make somebody special for you. And they're going to be compatible with you. And when y'all get together, you're going to have a lot of fun ruling over everything that I give you power over. Oh, Lord, you're going to help me. Glory to God. Amen. And when the way the world pushes us to operate. Praise God. Even when we come to the church a lot of times we feel the pressure that we have to look good to the point that we put ourselves in debt trying to impress other folk. Praise God. And then the family has to suffer because we spend all of our money trying to show folk that we can look good. Praise God. That ain't going to help me but I'm at home. a lot of time we laugh, we joke, pray God, and they try to keep me kind of, you know, uh, hip and on track. Pray God, and they have a real problem because I'm not trying to impress folk. And so I try to help them to understand me by explaining I have what you call humble days. Happy neighbor, say humble days. You know, it's a humble day, for sure. Praise God. A humble day is where I don't do a whole lot of fixing up. No, ain't no help me. Praise God. My shots might not even match. I don't comb my hair. No, ain't no help me. Praise God. Why? Because I want folk to know, even if I don't look good, I know who I am. Yo, 
flesh. I'm going to call a woman because I think she's all of that. She's going to do fine in my life. What was God doing? God was mirroring what he was planning to do in heavenly places. Can I take you to Revelation? Can I take you to Revelation? Come with me. Come with me. Turn your Bible to Revelation, the 19th chapter. And the Bible says this. Glory to God. It says, and they were praising God. And, and you know, I, I'm trying to rush and I ought not to rush. I ought to take the time and share this with you because it is truly important. Glory to God. The Bible says, Revelation, the 19th chapter. Uh, listen. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshiped God that sat on the throne saying, Amen. Hallelujah. And a voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, all ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard as it were the voice of a great and the voice of many waters as the voice of mighty thundering saying hallelujah for the Lord God omnipotent reigns let us be glad and rejoice let us give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb is come and his wife have made herself Ready. Glory to God. Where did God's wife come from? Hallelujah. Just like, praise God, God opened up Adam and took out a rib. Glory to God. And made a partner just for him. Glory to God. God opened up his veins and poured out blood. A wife, somebody who would be just right for him. Glory to God. All of us, mother used to sing me a song long time ago. Praise God, said something to the fact uh, I want to be your bride when my way grows dark. Walk right by my side. And when my faith grows weak, Lord, let me see something in my life that you have done for me. Why is God doing stuff so that he can shape our mind, so that we can start thinking like him, acting like him, feeling like him, Getting ready to be with him. Glory to God. And we're going to live together forever. Glory to God. The Bible says, don't have time to tell you the whole story, but he has gone away to prepare a place for his bride. The reason he's gone away, praise God, is the custom of the Jews was always to build a house for the bride. And then was complete because he had to show her I could take care of you. Oh, I wish I could preach up in here. Glory to God. Nowadays, and I've told you this before, amen, we are at the place where, praise God, instead of the husband taking care of the wife, y'all ain't gonna help me. Glory to God. The wife is taking care of the husband. Glory to God. She's out working and he's home taking care of the house. Y'all ain't gonna help me. That I know, I know, praise God. We've gotten so modern now, praise God, that we are saying, Pastor, uh, you are uh, behind the time. Praise God. You are, amen, oh, funny, dirty, and things have come new and you things in a new manner. Glory to God. But I come to tell you, God, the one that I serve, he does not change. And praise God, he was taking care of us when he made us. And every now and then, he stops by to make us to know I love you so much. I would do something for you to let you know I'm the one that woke you up this morning. I'm the one that started you on your way. You couldn't make it if I wasn't.
I started in Genesis, I jumped to Revelation, I'm taking you to Ruth, and I'm trying to show you, COVID to God, that family matters. The world is trying to tell us, praise God, that we've gotten this thing wrong. And they want us, praise God, to show them that we love God. Praise God by changing who we are. And if we change who we are, then we will show them that we really love them. I come to tell you, I can't change. Because the God that I serve, he does not change. My Bible tells me he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He said, I am the Lord, and I change not. And because I don't change, I'm not going to cut you off. Because I don't change, I'm not going to destroy you like I destroy other folk. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on you. I'm going to train you up in the way that you ought to go. I'm going to work on your heart. I'm going to work on your mind. I'm going to work on your inner being. You need to know that God loves you in such a way that he's not going to cut you off. But he's not going to allow you to be like you are. Because you can't be in the pride. Pastor, you ain't talking to us. Because last we got delivered huh? and I'm grateful to God for deliverance huh? but if you don't hold on to it huh? you gonna go back huh? where you came from huh? but I come to tell you huh? I want to look back over my shoulder huh? and when I look huh? I want to see where I came from huh? not where I still am huh? I want to let the world know I know I'm safe I'm saved, and I know I'm saved. Let me try to close here. Praise God where I started in the book of Ruth. The Bible says this praise comes up in the second chapter of Ruth. Praise God, verse number one. And they only praise God had a kinsman of her husband, a mighty man of wealth, a family, glory to God of the family. And his name was Boaz. Glory to God. What are you going to tell us about Boaz? Boaz was a mighty man. And the Bible says, and the Ruth, the Moabites, said unto Naomi, let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn after him whose sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, She came and gleaned in the field after the reapers, praise God, uh, her hat was to light on a part of the field that belonged unto Boaz, who was the kinsman of a living. What are you going to tell us about this? I need you to know that God purposed our destiny. And when, glory to God, we are the children of God, called by God, you are not just moving haphazardly, even when you think you've fallen in the wrong direction, God knows that he needs you there because he wants to work something in or work something out, glory to God, he sung the song last night, Jesus, he will work it out. Glory to God. What is he going to work out? That problem that I had, that I just couldn't seem to break. When I prayed and I prayed, what did I pray? Don't let it be too late. Tap your neighbor, say, neighbor, I don't want it to be too late. Come on, clap your hand. Lift your voice and just give God a hallelujah praise. And she's in the field. The field that she's in 
in is the field that God wanted her to be in because they needed a near kinsman. They needed somebody in the family who could work for them. God needs us to have somebody in the family that will work for us because we tend to get in trouble. My young people, glory to God, are finding out that life is not as easy as they thought. They thought, praise God, because they were young and strong and good looking, they wouldn't get in trouble. But when the devil creeps up on you, you find out that he will get you to do things that you thought you never do. So we got young people finding out that when you have sex, you can get in trouble. Oh, y'all ain't saying that. The folks say, it ain't going to never happen to me. Ah, but that's what the devil wants you to think. Young folk thinking they can act the thug and get out of jail with a get out of jail card. Only to find out it's real out there. And if God is not on your side, Oh, hallelujah to God. You need somebody. You need a kinsman. You need somebody with money. You need somebody with pull. You need somebody with power. Because broke folk can't help. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I know the world tells us. Because we're Christians, we ought not to make money. But the Father, the God. That we serve. He's rich. He's got houses. He's got land. He's got all the cattle on the thousand hills. And we are his children. And if we are his children, then we ought to be his heirs. And if we are his heirs, we ought to have access to his riches and his blessing. I come to tell you, I know who I am. And I'm wondering, are you here? Do you know who you are? I'm in the family of the God of power. And when I need help, he'll bring me out. Listen, Listen to your Bible. The 12th verse, praise God, of this second chapter. And one more chapter, a verse, and I will try to let you go. Praise God, the Bible says, in the second chapter, 12th verse, the Lord recompense thy work and a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel under whose wing thou art come to trust. We trust too much in folk. Tap your neighbor, say neighbor. Folk are going to let you down. I come to tell you I would like to be there for everybody. But I can't be there for you. You and you. Somebody's going to have to go without. But the God that I serve, he'll be right there when you need him. But you got to be hooked up with him. I heard the scripture say, I'm wrapped up. I'm tied up. I'm tangled up in Jesus Christ. And when you're tangled up in him, you stop getting in stuff that's outside of him. Because when he blesses you, it feels good to be blessed. When he blesses you, you feel so good that you want to stay right there and get a little more blessed. Is there anybody here that wants to be in the family of God? Last verse, 15 verse, listen, and I'm trying to close with this. Bible says, and when she was risen up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men, saying, let her glean even among the sheaves, and reproach her not. And let fall also some of the handfuls of purpose for her. 
and leave them that she may glean them and rebuke her not. What is the scripture saying? God, she don't deserve none of it. It's mine in my field. But because of favor. Oh my God. I'm going to bless her whether she wants to be blessed or not. Because she's family. Tap your neighbor. Say family. Go with God. Family is a strong bond. And when family is working like it's supposed to, glory to God, you are not going to see your brother or your sister in trouble. And you ain't going to hear. I uh, wish I could preach in here. <laughs> Glory to God. We see saints in trouble and say, I ain't going to say nothing because they might think I'm meddling if we are really family. Glory to God. Family meddles. Y'all ain't going to help me. Glory to God. Family will tell you, I don't like that woman you picked for your wife. Glory to God. Praise God. Why are they saying that? Praise God. Cause I'm family. Glory to God. I'm going to marry him anyhow. I don't care what you're going to do. I just want you to know what I think because I praise God. The saints of God ought to be able to be with one another and when you see me going wrong, you ought to be able to tell me whether I like it or not. Glory to God. I don't care what you do. I just want you to know that's wrong. Glory to God. And that once daddy finds out he's going to step in and he's going to do something I've got a few scriptures praying God but I'm going to try to close this by saying glory to God that God had designed in the Old Testament glory to God so that we could see revealed in the New Testament the true plan of God unfolding but we need to understand just like Satan that Adam and Eve in the garden he's going to work on us in this present age. I don't care what you into. The devil is going to try to talk you out of it because he doesn't want you to be the blessed of God. And he know, praise God, when you mess up, a good father is going to correct you. You ain't supposed to be my friend. You ain't supposed to just try to talk to me. Glory to God, my mother would tell me before she beat me. My father would tell me before he beat me. Didn't I tell you? Y'all ain't gonna help me. Praise God. But, but, but I don't care. But didn't I tell you? You supposed to hear what I said. I don't care what nobody else said. You don't live with them. They don't pay for you. They don't bless you. You live with me. You do what I
blessings. Your blessings are going to track you. They're going to catch up to you. They're going to overtake you. And folk are going to try to steal your blessings. But you're going to have so much that you ain't even going to care. Go ahead and take that. Because that's just the crumb. My father.
for a simple procedure. And uh, in the hospital, in that simple procedure, laying on the table, I died. Y'all don't know how And uh, <laughs> if it hadn't,
So the only thing we got to decide is whose family you in.
For the bride has made herself ready. There were some flaws in my life. I ain't gonna help him go. I'm not gonna ask him to work on me. I'm gonna work on me. And then when I present me to him, if there's something out of place, he will tell me the correct thing. We sit back, tell him how I'm gonna work on me. Make me right. You don't want to be right. Why aren't you working on it? I'm like, Come on, get it. I'm going to grab it. 